Larry's at the point where he's having so much trouble walking now. He takes 20 pills a day, and this is the week. We've called the physician to increase his cinnamon dose, and that will increase his side effects. My uh, symptoms are way too more obvious than they were before. And the pain is a little sharper. Hello. Hi, Hi Larry. My name is Dr. Blake. I'm Larry Smith. Nice to meet you. So, Larry, have you ever used medical marijuana before? No. The goal of treatment with Parkinson's patients, or with any medical marijuana patients for that matter, is to decrease the symptoms of your qualifying condition by using the least amount of uh, medical marijuana possible. These are not the days of free for madness. Yet I and millions of other people, millions of other people, can't have it, can't have it without facing serious jail time. Now to a warning, Arizona's new medical marijuana law is resulting in some people ending up in handcuffs. You might have a medical marijuana card, but you could still end up being arrested even if you're a qualifying medical marijuana patient. These are people who believe they are operating within the confines of the law, but that's apparently getting some of them arrested. Just a few miles from here in Oregon, medical marijuana is legal. But under the Controlled Substances Act, marijuana remains illegal in the eyes of the federal government. 25-year-old Brianna Bilbray is battling stage 3 melanoma cancer. While undergoing chemotherapy treatments, she smokes marijuana to help deal with nausea. This medicine helped me within seconds. She's also the daughter of Republican Congressman Brian Bilbray. And now she is suing the federal government. The federal laws about marijuana are schizophrenic. We're talking marijuana is just as bad as methamphetamine, which, you know, it isn't. It simply isn't. It's a plant that has a chemical in it, and this chemical does uh, some good things and does some bad things, and the good things uh, we appreciate and the bad things we try to avoid. It doesn't seem to me as a big deal. You think the cops all for me 100%? Yeah, I was all so damn me. I do not like the idea of breaking federal law. Um, you know, even though it's the state law is in California is very clear that it's permissible. Um, I'm, I'm still uncomfortable. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, if this is the only thing, and as far as I know, we've tried everything, and this is the only thing um, that's left, and so we are, we are going to give it a go and see how it goes. Welcome. Hey, Welcome to one-on-one. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and put you through. Well, I just, I just thrill. We get people in here a lot that are not for medical marijuana. They, they think it's a drug. Their regular doctor wouldn't tell them to take it. They don't know what to expect when they come through the door. They're scared. So when those people come in here, it's, it's good to be able to put them at ease and have, have them leave with a feeling, okay, this is, I, I'm okay, this is okay. You know, they don't walk out feeling like they've, they've done something wrong. They've been somewhere they weren't supposed to be. They've been educated. They've gotten a focused medication aimed at a certain specific ailment. They didn't just come in here and, and buy pot. He has this real problem with dyskinesia, and some of it is the, actually the result of the drugs he has mm -hmm. to take so that he can move. And then he has a lot of pain, okay. um, you know, just because his body is just so rigid a good deal of the time. Right. For pain relief, as far as to help with the joints, to help with the sleep, this is, is our old hippie OG. For people that don't like to smoke, the edibles have a much longer lasting effect. Yeah. Great for pain relief. Yeah. See, that sounds really good for him. All right. No. These are 15. I would say it's much cheaper than all of the prescription meds that you're going to get put on. Some of those can be extremely expensive. A lot of them are not covered by your insurance. And you start compounding meds. You get one medication, you need another one because you got side effects. And that one gives you side effects, you need another one because you're nauseous. Now you need another one because you can't sleep. The more you can eliminate, the budget that you need is going to go down. So the medications Larry takes for his Parkinson's are thousands of dollars. Uh, every time I refill a prescription, um, it's about $3,000. And the deep brain stimulation was about a quarter million dollars. And then every time Larry's batteries run down and need to be replaced, it's probably around $80,000. So, so this was, um, this, this was 40. The fact that there is no money to be made in marijuana certainly plays a role in limiting research on marijuana proper. 
pharmaceutical companies have no interest in marijuana because they cannot sell it. Uh, the public has a mixed interest in marijuana because we know the public opinion in this country and others is split. You know, there are those who believe it's useful and those who believe it's extremely harmful. Hi, Larry. How are you? Come in. Come in. Let's see. How are you feeling? It's been a bit of a rough week. Really? And the best way to take it is to put it under your tongue and rub it in your cheek. Don't do too much. You're going to be asleep all, all afternoon. You know what you should do? No. Don't no. try to communicate. Just relax. See what happens. We know from animal experiments that the endogenous cannabinoid system is very important in regulating motor activity, that very type of activity that is impaired in Parkinson's disease. From animal experiments, we also know that boosting certain branches of the endocannabinoid system is helpful in relieving symptoms of Parkinson's. Finally, from anecdotal information, we know that certain patients who smoke marijuana experience relief of their symptoms. I think you're calmed down. So quickly. Isn't that amazing? He used just a single drop and his hands afterwards were rock steady and the dyskinesia left. Who uh was -huh. the guy? It works most of the time. In fact, it's... Oh! <laughs> Did you guys eat lunch? Are you yeah. hungry now? Yeah. <laughs> 20, 20 a.m. Yeah. Actually, I've... A person like me could really use marijuana. It makes, it makes me pretty angry that sure, I can't right get it in my home <laughs> state. Sure. The number one frustration that I have is knowing that there is this untapped potential that comes from what marijuana is, te is teaching us to generate new medicines and being stuck because of financial issues or political issues, that is extremely frustrating. We now know that medical marijuana um, controls dyskinesia, um, and yet it's not, it's not available to us.